Hi everyone, before we get into the video itself, this is Future Lathrix here, and well, as you can probably tell by the title, this video is all about the end of the cycle. The psionic event which ends the galaxy, or at least ends your entire empire, turning it into one powerful entity which will then roam the galaxy, devouring all it comes across. But originally, this playthrough was not meant to be about that, and I had every intention of making this a single video, a single full playthrough, all to do with the Void Habitat origin, trying to see how how many habitats is too many habitats and just spamming them everywhere. So expect the first half of the video or so to be me just playing a normal full playthrough before things go very, very wrong in all the right ways. If you would like to go straight to when I find out the end of the cycle event, there will be a link in the description with the timestamp so you can go straight there since I can't put it on the screen anymore with annotations because they don't exist. So if you want to watch the full thing, it's a full playthrough split into two with weird things happening. If you're just here at the end of the cycle, the next episode should be out by the end of next week since it is so difficult to edit all this together and I'm still recording that bit. But yeah, this event I have never seen happen in my years of playing Stellaris and I've gone after it specifically multiple times. So naturally it happens the time I'm not even playing Spiritualists. So hope you enjoy. It has been an insane roller coaster and really fun. And a lot of time has gone into this, so if you like these kind of videos, then likes and all that are very, very much appreciated. I hate saying this at the start of the video, but these videos do take about a week to produce each, and they do harm the channel because of that. Likes help. Thank you so much for watching, and enjoy, and now back to past Latherix with the regular greeting, sir and sirettes. Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Stellaris with me, Latherix, and of course, welcome to the Raxar State, our newest full playthrough. So today, we are going to be doing something a little bit silly, and we are going to be going with Void Dwellers, and taking it to the extreme. The goal of this full playthrough is to see if spamming habitats as early as possible, and just continuing to put down habitats on every single planet, is worth it. And honestly, I actually think it is, because habitats now are different. They've been updated recently, there are now several layers to them. There's the first stage, which is only four districts big, and then there's the second stage, which is six districts, and then the final stage, which I haven't really looked into yet. This is a specialist stage in which you can have specialist buildings on. Of course, if you start off with Void Dwellers, you instantly start off in Habitats, and your species get plus 15% resource as long as they are in a Habitat, which is a seriously big deal. Considering populations are power these days in Stellaris, I'm thinking of having thousands upon thousands of population over hundreds of Habitats, we should get an insane amount of resource. This is also going to be a nightmare of micromanagement, but hopefully a fairly fun one. So what exactly is the Raxar State? The Raxar State is not something you would want to be in if you had a choice. We are fanatic, authoritarian, and we are pacifist. Although I do keep on changing pacifist for other things, I do think it is worth it for this particular type of run. So the Raxar state came to be when our planet was doomed. Over time, the planet was becoming increasingly unstable until it would no longer be able to harbour life. In this brief time we had, we created the first habitats, and everyone rallied around the strongest members of the society. Thus, we became fanatic authoritarian. A single voice, a single throne, a single state. It is the solemn duty of the masses to obey the enlightened few who have been charged with the great responsibility of leadership. Because, well, when we first went to the habitat, there wasn't enough food, there wasn't enough space, there wasn't enough resources, and freedom was just something we couldn't allow. Over time, though, this became a lot worse, and now one of our civics is the guilds. Much of the true political power in this society rests with a great number of powerful and ruthless guilds. They know how to get the most out of owned populations. This means owned populations give plus 10% resource, and 40% of our population will naturally be owned. Not exactly a nice place to live. Now, this is actually a lot more powerful than it used to be because now we have indentured servitude, which means our own populations can also be specialists. So our specialists will give us plus 10% resource without costing consumer goods, at least, from their own upkeep. The jobs will still cost consumer goods, but that makes them far, far cheaper. Now, of course, the issue with having a population like that straight away is that they are going to be very unhappy, causing the stability of the habitats to drop. But they're not all that influential, and in fact, eventually you get the processing facility, which makes them even less influential. As long as the leaders are happy, 
overall the habitat will still be stable. We only really care about the leaders and the free populations. Again, we are not a very nice empire. Now, this is the reason why I kind of want to go pacifist. We don't really care about space all that much. I was tempted by xenophobe originally, but... Again, don't really care about expanding all that much, but pacifist will give us more stability, which means all our habitats will be producing more resource, and all of our resources are going to come from our populations. I'm also tempted by Xenophile, because trade value is amazing with habitats, and that means we can actually make other people like us. Don't know how that works, but apparently we are very, very good at talking to them, which is something I'm not particularly good with. But still, that is something I'm tempted with. We're also going with Merchant Guilds to begin with. Now, this is a weird one, but because we're going to have so many habitats... I honestly think this is going to be, for once, a good choice. Now, maybe this is a good choice normally, but every time I've used it, I've always been slightly underwhelmed. A number of powerful and very influential merchant guilds have risen to prominent positions in this society. They hold significant sway with the government. And again, that makes sense when resources are scarce. Those which have them, well, they have a good bargaining chip. So capital buildings provide merchant jobs, merchants also produce unity. So essentially you're trading the, the administrators, I believe they're called, which only give unity and some amenities for merchants, which give a load of trade value in addition to unity and amenities. And because we're going to get those quite quickly every time we build a new habitat, we're going to have lots of free merchants from this. And I think that's going to help keep the economy rolling, especially in the early game. And again, I think this really makes sense with the lore of the Empire, so that is what we're going with. Now, a few other options we could have gone with, which I think could have been more powerful, but I just don't like it as much in terms of the theme of the Empire and the idea we're going with, is things like Inward Perfection, which is just insanely powerful, and all we'd have to do is that, and then we can unlock that, and Inward Perfection... Again, it's just so, so powerful. Plus 20% unity, plus 20% pop growth, one extra edict, which is now a big deal because edicts have been completely revamped in the new update, and extra happiness. That's just really good. It's just an all-round really powerful civic. Now, of course, we can't fight anyone or join federations, but other than federations, I don't really care all that much about those things. Another option, really, which I think would have been really powerful is this. Meritocracy. Essentially, it gives us an extra point in our leader level cap, which is nice, but then... Specialist populations have plus 10% resource output. Combine that with the guilds, and then owned populations who are specialists become utter powerhouses. But then I would have to be at least oligarchic, which I don't particularly like the idea of. I like the idea of being a dictatorship for this, again, just because I think the Empire fits like that, and I would have to sacrifice merchant guilds. I feel like later on in the run, I may actually make a complete government swap and go from what, what we currently are, and then move over to an oligarchy, which means we'll have to embrace one of the other, one of the other ethics, which could be any of them really, as long as there's enough support, and then we also have to move over to an oligarchy from a dictatorship. Perhaps over time, the society becomes more free as resource becomes more abundant for even the lowliest in our society. Freedom may become an option later. Maybe eventually we won't be completely and utterly evil. So that's a summary then of the state. Originally the control was a necessity in tough times, but eventually that transformed into something a lot more exploitative, and thus we became a fair bit more dark. Now, in our traits, we have Void Dweller, of course, which gives us plus 15% resource output for specialists and workers at a cost of minus 10% growth rate. We are going to be sedentary because we, well, where are we going to go? We are stuck on habitats. We are weak because of our time in low gravity, especially with the early habitats before they upgraded to this current state. We are communal because, well, we're all next to each other all the time. Natural engineers because we rushed habitats. And we are conformists because the state knows all. There's a lot of other options I wanted to go with, things like Thrifty and, well, honestly, Rapid Breeders, but I do think this fits a lot more, once again, with the Empire. And that is pretty much that. So, we are, of course, plants, which means we have the plant ships and the plant uh, everything else. And so, we get going. Okay, so after looking at everything one more time, I've made two changes. First of all, I'm not going to go with Pacifist, I'm going to go with Xenophile. Now, Pacifist, I think, is very powerful, but it boxes us in a little bit too much. Since we're going to expand so slowly at the beginning, like really, really slowly, we need ways to get out if we get trapped. And if we're Pacifist, we simply can't do that. So Xenophile actually allows us to be a lot more aggressive 
It also increases our trade value, which is very powerful with merchant guilds and the fact that the habitats are just really, really good for trade value. I was even tempted to go down the corporate option. If we go with corporate just for a second, we can see we do have indentured assets. Essentially, it's the exact same as the guilds, but we can't be fanatic authoritarian, which is kind of the whole point of the lore of this empire. So we are going to stick with being a dictatorship, though we could very easily swap over to corporate, and it would probably be better, honestly. It'd be a lot of trade value. We could go with regular authoritarian and then fanatic xenophile. So essentially we're trading 0.5 influence per month and 5% of our worker output for another 10% trade value and another envoy, which is really good. But for now, we'll stick with that. The other change I've made is I've removed weak and I've changed it with slow learners because I've been thinking we're going to probably suffer for food and minerals quite quickly. Weak is, although it's not a particularly bad one, I don't want it to slow us down. So slow learners instead, we can remove that as we continue. So with that, let's get going. Now I am sticking with the end game being 2300, which means it can spawn at 2350. This is a full hundred years sooner than the default, and crisis strength is set at times 25 the default. So very, very difficult there. I was going to have the end game earlier, like I've been doing in all the other Let's Plays up until this point, but I'm not sure about this empire. I think it's going to be fun, but it could be either really powerful or really, really weak. So I don't want to push it too much, because if I rush, I don't think I'm going to have quite as much fun with it. So we're sticking with this. Next time, we will bring the end game earlier. Other than that, all the usual stuff. Grand Admiral difficulty, AI aggressiveness on high, random placement for the empires, and of course, we are allowing advanced starts this time, since I forgot last time. Yeah, let's go. And so here we begin, somewhat in the middle of the galaxy. So then, honestly, I am going to be very silly during this run and really focus on making more habitats. That's the only thing which is going to be my main goal. So extra research, that's fine. More population growth and extra research again. And as usual, just going to downgrade the ships so they have absolutely the bare minimum. Then we upgrade them, which will give us loads of alloys. We're currently at 100, and once this is done, we'll have 245. Those will go bye-bye, as will the consumer goods. And then we have loads of minerals, so straight away we can rush into more alloy production. You will turn into a foundry station, and in a second I will be replacing the civilian industries with a second foundry. The end goal is to have all of our consumer goods being created via trade. Since if we go into policies, we can see here trade policy and we have consumer benefits. Essentially, we're halving how much energy we get from trade, but then we're also producing consumer goods. And this way, we can keep the economic policy as militarized economy with no negatives, since this reduces consumer goods from jobs by 25%, but the trade jobs aren't affected by this. Might not be the most efficient way, but it's nice and simple. Keeps everything with basically trade and alloy production. And they're the main two things we have to worry about. The only thing then, really, other than that which they concern, is just making sure we have enough minerals. Okay, that's going as well. And so, we can start doing some of the mining stations. Do still want some scientists though. Although we're not going to be expanding quickly, we still want to find the precursor tech as soon as possible. Now normally this is where I'd activate map the stars, but we no longer have the edicts because edicts have been massively changed. Because we are a dictatorship, we get one extra. Once you activate these, they will be active until you turn them off. If you have more than your cap, then you increase your empire sprawl, which can be kind of nasty. Information quarantine is kind of awesome. Plus five stability, plus five governing ethics attraction. We really want that because we want everyone in the same faction. If we can do that, we can control them a lot easier, and then we can get loads and loads of influence. And since our species is already conformists, that makes it even easier. Now I'm going down the route of domination, which I normally don't, because it gives us plus one influence when it's finished, and then we also have this, workplace motivators, giving plus five resources to our own populations and anyone in the worker group. Which makes them even better, so even more bonuses at producing alloys and research and everything else. They are going to be very, very powerful later on. 
a little while later and a few things have happened. So I've ended up rushing upgrading our main buildings on these two habitats. So they're going from being the administration over to central control, just like the main world here. The reason is, this is what will give us our initial merchants. And merchants give a lot of stuff. Amenities, unity, and a lot of trade value, or at least a good amount, which will make everything run smoother. So two more of those would be great. Although one thing I really should do is just remove this enforcer. We don't really need it. I'll just produce some other job and then move them over. We could also, of course, move over our bureaucrats because we're not really going to need the Empire Sprawl bonuses this early on. Though we could leave them, I'll see as things continue. Now, I have went with the Crime Lord deals. A few people have been asking me why do I seem to not really care about crime, and it's because I don't really care about crime. The negatives you get from crime are so minor, at least in my experience, that I would much rather have the additional stability. Plus, I'm not sure if this is true, but it seems like the Crime Lord deal stops a lot of the negative events from crime. A good example is in my last full playthrough, I had several Ringworld sections with almost 100% crime with the Crime Lord deal on, and they had no criminal jobs active, they had no events going on, so no actual negatives were coming from crime being in existence. And stability just gives extra resource for the entire planet, which is pretty nice. I clicked the wrong button there, but at least we got some influence out of it anyway, which we are going to need. Though we do still need a lot more alloys. So the question is, do I bother expanding at all? Or do I just wait until I have enough alloys to start building more habitats? I could go really early into information quarantine. Plus five stability. That wouldn't be bad. Ooh, although I could rush and try and get this. So, any archaeological site is going to be really good because we can sell the relics for energy... And it's qu quite a bit of energy, which then means we can rush alloys. But then influence will be a problem later on, so I'm not too sure. And there's a free science vessel. Thank you. Really? I get the worm in waiting? I don't know how this will affect my populations, though. Will it change their preference from habitat preference to tomb world? Will that mean I lose Void Dweller? Because that's not good. I don't know what to do with this. Uh, for now, I'll go with it, but then I'll stop at the last thing. Well, okay, so what I need to do is, just in case that does happen, I don't know how this is going to react, is I need to build a habitat outside of my home system. So when we finish this, if it does really mess up the populations, I still have some populations which were simply spared that, and then I can genetically put them back to how they were. But then we're going to have loads of worlds which we're not really going to want to use because we're, you know, space dwellers. So what we need to do is get a migration treaty or find another empire. We just... We need a secondary species. Situation log updated. That's a lot of physics research this early on. That's going to keep us with stored research for a long time. Not bad. Well, we are continuing down the path of the worm in waiting, and I've just now got enough alloys to start producing our first habitat. Habitats now cost less than they used to, is 150 influence and 1,500 alloys, but they start off with only four districts. You then need to upgrade them using a special tech, which is this one here. And then after that, you can access to a third version, which I've never seen before, so I'm not being spoiled for it. I'm going to find out exactly how powerful it is afterwards, since six districts is the standard what it used to be, so I am curious to see what happens after that. And I need more energy, because we keep on losing scientists to the worm. There we are. Try again. He's wishing I had a species which liked planets. Also, random automated dreadnought. The Loop Temple, time and stone. Open the Loop Temple to the public. Plus 5% happiness on our home world. Home habitat. Home attack. Ah, oh, they can have babies now. It's adorable. Bit creepy. But adorable. Stop. 
We found an alien ship over here, but also... We found... A civilization. Oh yeah, you're gonna love us, that's great. You will like us as well. Cool. Two empires that should, in theory, like us. Oh, are you a hegemony? Well, hegemony, well, how have that's pronounced? Either way, you're in a federation. Yep. We could probably join you. Interesting. Okay, uh, you're gonna like us more, aren't you? Yeah, fanatic authoritarian, just like us, and you are a xenophile, so you'll like us anyway, so I'll send both of my envoys to get really, really friendly with you really quickly. Star system charted. Still, though, we want to rush over there. We can, in theory, take over these planets and take over the populations. Also, they're like Tomb Worlds, you know? Like what we're about to have a lot of. What an interesting start. The worm in waiting is a, as void dwellers. Then an authoritarian federation next to us. Okay. Our first federation has been spawned. The Peace and Order Movement. And they're pretty darn happy with us. We just... Well, they want us to subjugate a nation. That isn't likely to happen anytime soon, but still. Technology secured. Using up a lot of influence to get over here, but I do think it will be worth it overall. And domination is finished. And I'm gonna go with one vision. I don't really go with this much anymore, but I feel like it's gonna help out since I do feel like amenities could be a problem later on. And the extra governing ethics extraction, really nice. I wanna keep all of my populations xenophile, authoritarian. Mostly authoritarian. Lovely, loads of little artifacts there. We can easily make pretty much anything out of those. Loads and loads of Star energy. Or, charted. we could get a bump of unity, which would be nice. I wonder what I'm going in with next. Harmony is quite tempting because of the extra stability and less amenities and extra governing ethics extraction. And it's something I don't normally go with early on, which makes it more interesting to me, I've got to be honest. Expansion might be nice as well, though, even though I'm not expanding that much, just... Less Empire Sprawl from Colonies. We're going to have loads of those. And, of course, more po population growth speed. Weird time to stammer there. Pop, 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 population. Because it pops. Our first habitat's about to Star be finished. System charted. Lovely. Construct Earlier I said our first federation. Obviously, I meant our first faction. But I'm sure there's already been comments about it. Which is fair. Managed to rush and just about grab the system before they did. Just going to grab this system as well, so it's all connected. Then we'll slowly expand here and here, but for now we are going to start saving up influence for more habitats. Turns out this is a tomb world right here and I didn't even notice. So we only get 60% habitability from non-tomb worlds for our new species, but still better than... Our main species. You'll get a ruler eventually. Our economy is a bit in a bad way now though because of all the new populations and well they have stellar culture shock. Oh, you will not like us, where are you? Well, here's hoping we can join the Federation soon because yet yeah, you're probably gonna hate us. Your democratic crusaders. You like to go to war? And you don't like authoritarians. Hi, we're authoritarians. Also, if you're wondering where all this energy came from, I have been selling every single relic we've been getting. And by relic, I mean artifact. We have only two left right now. Star system charted. Would like to grab all of these, but I would also like to start making more habitats. We need the influence. Star system charted. Also need the alloys. What is this run? More primitives. Well, this may be the most insane Void Dweller start I could, I could ever think of. Here's some other species to colonize the planet. Here is the Federation, which will love you. Here is the worm in waiting. Here's eight more artifacts and 4,000 energy. 
The game is kind to me today. I don't know why it's being so kind to me today, but it is. Hey, Mathrix, were you recently fairly sick with, well, a rather bad thing going around? Well, here you go. You're gonna get everything you want in game, at least. At the moment, I just kind of want trade habitat, so I'm just gonna keep putting them down like that. This system looks great. Wow, there's so many planets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because moons don't count. Eight, nine, ten, eleven habitats can be built there. Well, obviously, we're going for that as soon as possible. We could try and improve relations with this empire so it doesn't instantly attack us. It's only on Wary right now. It's bad, but it's not necessarily aggressive. But I'm trying to get these two on my side, though, as fast as possible, because as long as these two will vote yes for me joining the Federation, I can get in, similar to how I just got in as an associate. Also, we're xenophiles. Why would we not allow these to be full citizenship? Sure, as long as migration controls are enabled. That makes sense, though, with this empire. We could be sickly, for all we know. We've been forced into the void of space for hundreds of, if not maybe a thousand years, who knows, with our backstory. We're not allowing them to set foot on our habitats. The habitats will remain for the Raxar. And it has happened, we have joined the Federation. So it turns out I didn't actually have to make too many of them like us, only the leader. Because, of course, it's a hegemony. Basically, the leader has all the power in that kind of federation. So, I wasted a lot of alloys by trying to bribe these fellows. I currently have ten favors now with them. The idea was, they was already going to accept me. These were almost there, so I'd get the favors, ask them using the favors. That way, it'd be two versus one, and I'd get in. Didn't need to do that. Welcome to the federation. Oh, we started level two. Members get resources from jobs, plus five percent. And everything else is for the president. Yeah, the leader will rule this, obviously, but still. Technology secure. Rather be a member of it than not. Even just the really weak bonuses for members is better than nothing. And later on, when I'm stronger, I can get control from them. Just don't tell them that. With the old god stuff we just started, I can suppress the findings, giving us some influence. Which is good. Even though we currently don't have the alloys to do anything with it, because I just, again, bribed someone when I didn't have to. Construction complete. Wrong one. There we go. Here's something interesting. My diplomatic weight is already the greatest out of all of these groups. I don't really know why. Is it because of how many colonies I have in my population? That does contribute. So, I've just voted in a status change for the new leadership of this federation, which means once I get 25% stronger than the current leader, I will automatically become the new leader. Charted. I am usurping power so quickly. I wonder why that is, though. Complete. Where is all my diplomatic weight coming from? Oh, well, first of all, I'm a xenophile, give me plus 10%. Yeah, it's populations. I am probably, in fact, no, I am certainly ahead on populations, because they have their home world. But then, all of their outposts, so these are the outposts, these colonies, will only have, like, two on currently. Two there, three there, then their home world. Of 36, yeah, they have much lower populations than I have. In fact, can I check? Yeah, their population is only giving 85 diplomatic whites. Well then, back to building habitats now, over here, because there's just so many worlds. I'm gonna start populating that of habitats, and I can actually expand pretty well over here. This is more than enough space for us, it'll give us everything we need. We have another black hole, although we already have another one over here, which is fine. We have another dig site, another world, a wormhole. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty good area. Actually, the wormhole's a bad thing, but this will be our territory, and that's all we really need. Star system charged. Hurry up and get one more population so I can upgrade this already. Well, that's an interesting one. Extended shifts. 
We must ask our workers to toil harder. Some blood, sweat, and tears may be necessary for the greater good. Plus 10 resource output from workers and our owned populations. Yep, modest 10% happiness, but, well, with our new processing facilities as well, that's not really going to make too much of a difference to our overall stability. But it will further increase how many alloys they produce. So, on the downside, there's now crystals in our territory. No idea why, but they're attacking us. That has happened. On the upside, we are now the Federation leaders. Which means we have a Federation fleet. Which means we can deal with them anyway. Oh, come on, stop rallying. In a few moments, you're going to be fine and happy. Look at these worlds. Look, they're stable now. A little while later, and I'm now in the middle of the most boring war of all time. So this war is between the Alliance and the Republic versus our Federation. We're going to war, of course, because they are egalitarians and we are authoritarians. The problem is, there's just not much at stake. It's humiliate versus humiliate, and we are going to win this. And it's because, combined, our forces over here completely decimate this enemy, and that's just what's been happening. I've literally just put our... Well, all of our forces, our Federation forces, on follow with our allies' forces, and they've been dealing with it here. Over here, we are losing territory, but our ally isn't exactly weak himself. And there's just not many fights happening, so war exhaustion is staying pretty stagnant. That's about it, really. I need to deal with this soon. I should really make my own fleet at some point. And soon... We can make yet another Station under habitat. Attack. Already making two more. That's all I really care about right now. Oh, wow. Well, we found the home system of the amoeba. How about this, then? I really should have paused that and actually read what that was. Well, you can do so in the video, and I'm about to do so in the footage. So all it really said is this is their breeding grounds, and we're not sure what they're defending here. It'd be pretty mean to attack these, wouldn't it? That is fascinating. So that's where the amoeba have uh, arisen from. Can we status quo yet, please? Receiving communications. And I've just run out of... Oh, hello. We're about to be just one-off getting our precursors, and the war is starting to come to an end now. Very high war exhaustion on both sides. Attacking enemy. And we're about to go to their home system, which, ooh, they might be able to defend, actually. That's going to be quite painful. Colonization in progress. No, we should win. We should win with heavy losses. Oh, unless half their forces goes wee the other way, of course. But apparently, so did their ally, so, you know, AI being AI there. Expansion is finished. I wasn't really sure about getting expansion, honestly, but the extra population growth, the less um, empire sprawl, it does make things run a lot better. So next, Voidborn, they could just grab this so we have it. I'm fairly certain once I finish the first level, I get the next level anyway, even without that, but this would ensure this, and eventually I am going to want Voidborn, so sure. So this means we can put down buildings straight away if we so desire. Hulks vivisected. Lovely. And I'm probably going to use this planet as an energy planet because, well, look how many generator districts it has. Huh, surprise it has low stability. That's just because of the unemployment. Obviously, we have owned pops, but they shouldn't be affecting uh, approval rating too much. I guess we just don't have too many for the regulars yet. And once again, unemployment. We'll see as it continues. Well, a fleet we were following is no more. Can we please the status quo? I really don't care about winning this. I just want it to be over.
Okay, our ally's gonna lose that, but then we're gonna swoop in and take out the fleet while it's damaged, unless it runs away. It's been a very annoying war. Again, it, the reason why I'm kind of skipping it probably quite a lot in the editing is just because there's no real stakes to it. If we lose, we lose. If we win, we win. I don't really care either way. Now I'm in charge, there's going to be some changes around here. I've just changed the Federation centralization to low, and soon I'm going to be changing the fleet contribution to medium. All must support the greater good of the Federation. And speaking of which, we're about to get a brand new member. Uh, let's not have that many, let's just have a few, shall we? I'm assuming you're like alloys, right? That way I've got some more for the future as well. As soon as I accept that though, we can just use one for now. The foreign power is hating us. And a welcome to the Federation. It'll take a little while for this to level back up, that's fine. So one more member has joined us. Receiving communications. Gassy. The Empire. How about you, conglomerate? Do you like us? You don't hate us. You won't join the Federation, though, but if we have association status, you might start to like us a bit more in the future. Sure, let's see if we can get the ruthless capitalists to join us as well. Well, I did have three habitats on the go, but now I only have two, with one just being made. We are racking up habitats fairly quickly. I'm also sending in my Federation fleet to deal with this enemy here, so we can start expanding out this way when we want to. Our territory is going to be tiny. So the thing we're struggling with the most right now is actually minerals. Uh, a lot of the buildings are very expensive, so the districts, and it's time to stack up. So all new habitats are going to be over mineral deposits so that they can become mineral habitats. There's mining habitats, and of course, thankfully, a lot of the worlds we've just grabbed do have a decent amount of mining districts, so that'll start picking up the slack as well. So with the extra building space, though, I am now putting down the processing facilities. What these do is increase output from our own populations by 5% and decrease their political power. Overall, decreasing their effect on the pop approval rating, which is pretty good, considering they're very, very unhappy. Again, you can't really blame them for that. We're being very, very evil. They did not take long at all to forgive all of our other Federation members. Look at that. Inviting to Federation no longer has any huge negatives. Association status is powerful. How about you, Confederacy? Mm, fanatic spiritualist xenophobe. Yeah, you're probably going to have a problem with at least one of our members. Yeah, you are. Okay, you're definitely not joining us. And the Sovereignty currently has closed borders of us. Uh, they're not super aggressive to us, but yeah, they don't hate. They don't particularly like any of us. That would be really difficult. The state over here. Fanatic materialists. We do have some materialists in our membership. Okay, we could potentially get you. The problem is distance. Yeah, trying to grab you would be a serious issue. Also, apparently, we're at war again with our neighbours, this time for conquer, at least, but for, like, a system or two each. Once again, not a huge deal there. Problem is, I don't have a fleet, a fleet to defend myself, but on the upside, we're the ones who declared war on them, and the reason is, well, our guys are just far stronger. And we actually have a new ally now as well, so, in fact, two new allies, so, yeah, they don't stand a chance. Unlocks station upgrade habitat world. That's interesting. Now, really sadly, I ended up losing my amoeba, so Bubbles has fallen to the enemy. Naturally, the second I regain control of this federation, I am going to crush the Republic, I'm going to make them suffer, I'm going to do horrible things to their eyes. But in a friendly, good guy kind of way. The Republic are kind of being crushed anyway. We could make some claims. I mean, it's an aggressive war, so it'll be expensive, but we can make a claim or ten. How about we grab their world from them? We'll see if our allies manage to get this bit of territory. I am starting to make some corvettes just to defend ourselves against their smaller groups. But if our allies manage to get over here, I will gladly provide the ground forces. And don't worry, we'll treat their people with respect and dignity. Oh, apparently at some point, this fellow over here, the Consensus, managed to get association status with us. Well, it wasn't me, so one of our allies must have done that. 
This is the most peacefully expanding hegemony I've ever seen. Normally, it's join or die and then just conquer the galaxy. This time, no, we're just being really nice to everyone who doesn't attack us first earlier. But then kill their pet amoeba. Like, who does that? Okay, the allies are taking this station. I'm building up some more ground forces. And I've made a claim over here, which costs more fortune. In return, of course, we get one of their colonies. It's not a particularly good colony. It has one population, but it means we have their species in our grasp. We don't even have their species. We have the other species. Who are they? Isn't that you? Well, I still count you just as culpable, I suppose. Not quite as fun, but you know. We have won this war. I didn't even have to land on the planet. Oh, there's another planet here as well. Cool. So let's have a look-see at you, then. What are you? You have ocean preference. Hmm. It's actually a pretty nice world, to be fair. Well, the usual for you. Migration controls enabled. Nash Josh do it. Uh, default rights, full citizenship, and migration controls enabled. We don't want them to end up growing on our habitats, which currently are still completely us. Is it worth putting down a colony on this planet? It's a low habitability, 60%, but that will increase later with a little bit of tech, so... Might as well get it working. So either these fellows, or one of the Tomb World groups. I like this one with the, inter with the intelligence and charismatic. It's a nice combo. You can just continue to grow here. You weird fungusy things. Oh, wow, the Empire- I didn't realise this, but the Empire just took all of that. Yeah, the Empire was very, um, aggressive with that. <laughs> the Republic is all but crushed. Oh, I like my allies. They're mean. But in a fun way. Now researching Omega alignment. This is the final stage before we summon in the worm to devour our sun. I wonder what happens to habitats orbiting worlds which get affected- oh, no. I shouldn't do this. But I need to know what happens. Science must be done! Selling so many alloys right now, I've hardly had any habitats being built. I mean, look at my influence just sitting there, waiting. But, we needed the minerals. The minerals now are finally starting to stabilise. And our alloys have increased in how many we're making. Ooh, and our admin cap is suffering a little bit as well. Ooh, there's an ocean world. Good! Somewhere to send our new species so it wasn't a complete waste. There's a tomb world over there. In fact, there's quite a few worlds if we expand quickly, but that's not going to happen. Boost nomination bid. We are now on exceptional. I really, really want the marketplace. Considering we're making so many alloys, we could float our economy quite strongly on them. That's only going to get more severe as we continue to build more and more habitats. So, yeah, would like part of that. Ooh, we need more admin cap, and we need it now. Really should specialise some of these habitats a bit more, and I will do that soon. We are generating the entry point in just one month. So the reason why I'm concerned about this, because this is the final worm in waiting event, is that I don't know what's going to happen to our populations in the habitats, and I also don't know what's going to happen to the habitats themselves when the worlds get changed. Now, in theory, they should be fine, since I think you can put a habitat above a normal planet, which I'll check on later. I think you can. Yeah, no errors coming up there, and if I try and do it over there, though, yeah, it doesn't even let me have the option. But it's just because they're being changed. I don't know what will happen, what will cause any issues. I don't know. Here's hoping it doesn't, because that'll be a... Serious problem. Special project complete. What was shall be, what shall be was. Star system charted. Oh, thank God. Okay, so we still have our habitats. That didn't change. And nope, our populations weren't changed at all. That is exactly what I wanted to see. Lovely. And now we just throw in our Tomb World people into every single one of these and we get loads and loads of habitats out of it. And by habitats, I meant to say colonies. I've been saying habitats a lot, it's kind of got stuck in my head. Oh, 
I would like one of these everywhere, please. That's a lot of colonies. Excellent, we control the market. Star system charted. Well, that's quick. Yeah, remember we can buy population, something I forgot until way too late in previous runs. Certainly something to consider. Which is good, because I really need to sell a lot of stuff right now, because I am really, really far behind. There we go. Still so many colony ships we need to make for all these things. The auto names are certainly interesting. Ooh, that's a size 25, not bad. Receiving communications. Can everyone please stop offering me things like migration treaties and such? It's not gonna happen. And it's not gonna happen mostly because I need the influence for other things. Well, our allies have declared war on the state. Sorry, the sovereignty. I have never seen the AI just steamroll itself so hard. Back to building habitats, which makes me very happy. So two more habitats are now going down, and one of our habitats is being converted into a habitat world. Once again, I have not actually looked up what this is or what it does, so very, very curious. Receiving. We are once again in the lead with diplomatic weight. Not quite enough yet to take control, but soon. Also, we've had our very first negative event based on crime on one of our three habitats which are currently undergoing the Crime Lord deal, and it's just created one criminal job. Now, I have had to implement two enforcers to deal with that, otherwise we'd have up to three criminals. Actually, is that even true? No, all I really needed was one. So essentially we've lost two jobs, although one is still producing unity there. But it has increased our stability by loads using the events, and this is one of three habitats 50 years in. And now we're at 0% crime, this will eventually be destroyed anyway. Like I was saying, crime is a bad thing. It will cause negative events. But the extra stability in the long run, especially considering how many habitats we have currently undergoing that bonus crime, is just worth it. Because stability is very, very good. Also, we have loads of alloys that's being floated now. That's weird to see. Okay, let's make another construction vessel. Let's get some more habitats sorted. Once again, I need to specialize these habitats. I will do that. And why is so many of them saying that they're factory stations? I have only like two buildings currently making consumer goods. Finally found the precursor homeworld. That took so long. There we are, we got the homeworld, and we've got a pretty useless relic, in my opinion. We have the Pox Sample. It allows us to have Pox Orbital Bombardment Stance when it's active, which actively destroys a lot of populations on the planets we're bombarding, without destroying the actual world itself too much. And our uh, lifespan has increased slightly. It's just not something too interesting, really. On the upside, the homeworld gives a fair bit of research, some alloys, and some gases. It's given anything else. I think it might give some other rare resources. Yeah, it's not the best, but it was a nice unity bonus and everything, so it it's better than nothing. We've just been so unlucky in this run. <laughs> Alpha Hub is our first habitat world, and now it has eight districts. I can't see too much unique about it. We can now put down the luxury residences and pretty much everything else, which the first stages can't have, as you can see here. But nothing too unique in terms of special things we can make. We do have the Arcane Replicator, but that's just from our origin, and that's just for our home world itself. Or home habitat, anyway. At least I'm almost certain about that. It's still really good. Because what it means is you're not going to be completely stopped by influence later on, with every habitat being able to be continuously upgraded all the way to eight districts 
They're all the size of a small planet. Just with better districts. I do like the change, ultimately. Continually upgrading it rather than just having the habitat and then it's done. But I was hoping for something a bit more, I don't know, unique at the end. Maybe I'm missing something. If I do, of course, see something I've missed, I will mention it later. Oh me, oh my, we are the leaders once again. What a nice Federation fleet. Return home, please. Let's... Let's not go through the scary territory, eh? In fact, I'm going to lock off these systems, otherwise we're going to end up losing things. Once they're restricted, it means even our reinforcements shouldn't go through these territories. And we don't end up losing them. So the reason why we just took control is finally I've swapped over expansionist for the merchant version in our diplomatic stance. We needed expansionist up until now because we just needed to save influence more than anything, but at this point, I'm just making habitats and not really expanding anymore, so the extra diplomatic weight from economy and the extra trade value is much more valuable to us. It's good to be back in charge. And now we can go to war if we wish to force enemies into the Federation gonna stop building this habitat because now we are researching this galactic administration which gives us one more civic slot so we can upgrade our government communications. once all our forces are here we are going to go to war with the clans did you change your names wait i thought you were the Re you were the republic what happened to you how did you change oh did you get split at some point, you got split by one of the other empires. I'm not quite sure how that happened, but apparently it did. Oh, you don't like us all that much, do you? Vessels upgraded. Also, why do I not have rivals at the moment? That is a silly misplay by me. Well, I guess up until this point, I was too weak to make rivals. Everyone else was overwhelming to me, so that's why. It's not so much a misplay. It's just I didn't realise I just now got stronger. Star system charted. For now, we're just going to be adding police state. <laughs> Yet we are, uh, we're continuing to be the good guys here. This will increase our stability by five on all of our planets forever. More resources, more power. More habitats. So, something from earlier, I'm now grabbing the tech so that I can hopefully pacify the amoebas because so i want to see what's in this system i want to survey it their home system their breeding grounds is there something of value here for us send over a construction vessel as well okay you can grab that grab that oh it's about time to make a new habitat as well more construction vessels. More habitats. We've just finished off Prosperity. Next we'll go into Discovery. But right now I'm waiting until I finish off this Psionic Theory. We're going to go down the Psycho route of things. Mind over matter. So now our people are psychics. 5% to all sciences and 5% to all energy credits. That's pretty good, considering all of our science is coming from our habitats, because, well, this species is just so good Star at specialist shot. stuff. I mean, look, this one owned pup here is producing 11 physics all by itself. It's only meant to be producing four. I mean, even the non-owned ones are still producing loads. It's because they get extra specialist output using Void Dweller. Again, eventually, I may try and drop our fanatic authoritarian so that we can become an oligarchy and then we can get meritocracy to increase special output even further, but for now, I'm fine with this. Things are really exploding right now, just loads and loads of resources. So, I'm currently saving up influence, though, just because now I've pacified them, I can survey the system, and I might want to try and make a star base there if I can. Again, I don't know what happens with this, it's brand new and really bloody cool. Sphere of influence makes the galaxy so much more alive when you have things like that.
and you. So annoyingly, our allies went to war with these empires anyway, so I can't just wait until I can go to war and make them part of the Federation. I will of course do this later, but it's going to take a while. On the upside, my science vessel is now over here, and we are surveying the home system of the amoebas. So far, it's just a really high resource system. I'm fairly certain there's actually a thing about these now. Comfort the Fallen. Oh, that's interesting. Unemployed workers have their unhappiness penalty reduced. Diplomatic weight from tech is reduced. Spiritist... Oh, no, don't like that. Or oh, um, oppose. Yeah, there are new things. Ban organic... No. Haha. <laughs> Own populations are something we want to keep. You I support. Pest control. Any empire with the... Oh, no. That's the space whales. I am not going to be destroying the space whales. Space wheels? Space whales, either. Yes to that. Yeah, there's quite a few new things. There's definitely something about... The space amoebas as well. It's not sure where. Ah, oh, Conservation Act. You can't kill them. Oh, there we are. The Space Amoeba Protection Act. Yeah, we'll probably allow that if it tries to go through. Anti-synths. Uh, no. So it starts off with Comfort the Fall and then it goes really heavily into anti-tech stuff. Vessels now building under. ourselves some battleships, now moving the Federation fleet Star over here so we can start dealing with the other enemy. Not 100% sure what we're even after right now in terms of claims and stuff, I'm just attacking Vessels whatever I see. Upgraded. Okay, we've fully explored the Amoeba home system. Seems like it's just a load of rare resources, no events or anything. Still really cool, I do adore this. Which I think I've mentioned way too many times already. Okay, I wasn't paying attention and apparently we just killed a Leviathan. Yeah, we just killed the Dimensional Horror. I was actually looking at my own buildings when that happened. Ow. Thankfully, the Dimensional Horror is by far one of the weakest Leviathans. I think the Automated Dreadnought is one of the others. By the way, sending a science vessel there to uh, research the unusual findings. I can't remember what this even gives us. I very rarely go after them. Where's what I'm after? There it is. Oh look, finally map the stars. Bit late for that. Okay, that's what we get. So we get the jump drive tech as a research option and we get 50% of it completed along with a lot of physics and society research into our stored research. Not that much of a big deal, honestly. It's something at least. So I'll go ahead and grab that. Secured. Now you can return back. And finally our forces are here, so let's start dealing with... Oops, Daisy. Let's start dealing with their territory. I just stopped building one of my habitats and I've been saving up for a while because I've decided I really want the system. I just need to have it. I will protect the amoebas from all outside forces. Colonization in progress. Kind of sad to see Technology. all of my influence go away, though. Vessels upgraded. At least we get loads of rare resources out of this. Not really worth it overall, but yeah, I just had to. That cost over 600 influence. So, over three, in fact, exactly four habitats, since habitats are 150 influence each now. Technology secured. Our vote weight is now diplomatic. We are on medium centralization and medium fleet contribution. 
So at this stage, I am pretty much overruling everyone else. And I am really close to getting the consensus over here to join us. They like us already quite a lot, and they're only on minus 62. We can buy some favours to get up to 50. As in, we can take away 50 of that. So we only need a little bit more. Sadly, it's distance which is the main problem. So we could always form commercial packs and everything else. One of the good things is, once we get level 4 in our federation, we get... This. Political Overseers. Which means Migration Pacts and Research Pacts no longer cost influence to upkeep. So I will be getting that of everyone as well, because then... Well, we'll make sure everyone likes us. That is to say, it's free for only people in the Federation. Don't know if I mentioned that, but yeah. Still really nice. Tech. Well, that's pretty nice, actually. We've just used Reverse Engineer Arcane Technology, and we've got access to a Nourishment Center, which is one of the Fallen Empire buildings. It's not a particularly strong one compared to some of the others, but it is still pretty nice. It's just a load of food, as you can well imagine. Can I not yet put it on? There it is. It just has the exact same image as one of the others. Oh, that's not as good as I imagined. 20 energy for 100 food. Uh, I mean, it's better than just buying it, but... Yeah, I'm not going to rush to get that. I'll put it down at some point. At some point, I'll be desperate for food, and that'll be fantastic. I'm glad I've got it, but it's just not exactly amazing. Well, this is new. A celebration of unity and leadership. The Federation has prospered under the wise leadership of our nation. Many racks are now filled. It is time for our services to the Alliance to be paid back with a celebration of its unity, and more specifically, the great Raxaran leaders that have done so much for it. They propose that member states contribute towards the erection of a grand monument in the skies above Alpha Hub, while in the meantime we send delegations of two member states' capitals, so two two member states' capitals, to aid them in their efforts to bring greater unity to the sphere. Yes. Let's do that. Now how do we actually do any of that? Joint operation approved! Our initiative to hold a joint celebration of the strength and unity of- okay we need to change the Federation's name- has met with approval among the majority of members. We will begin work on implementing our plans to spread harmony within the Alliance immediately. So all participating members gain a special project to build a monument. Yep. And we gain special projects to spread authoritarianism into other member states. Okay. It seems to be saying... We have to send them both to the same place, though. Interesting. Well, the war was victorious, and... Well, they took a lot of territory. Well done. Now, back to you. So close. Okay, let's become the very best of friends for a short while, shall we? Technology secure. Okay, Space Storm Silver arrives. Scientists are confident that this galactic space storm will dissipate by itself within a period of 5 to 10 years. Until it happens, the storm will play havoc with sublight engines, shield generators, and sensor systems in those star systems affected by it. That's 50% of the systems. Okay. And apparently, this is a byproduct of thousands of years of heavy hyperspace travel by civilizations both past and present. Well, that is very interesting indeed. Oh, yeah, oh, yep, there's the uh, system. Well, 
there's a storm affecting the system, I should say. I'm getting a bit tired now. This is still the first recording session, and wow, I've been recording for way too long. <laughs> that is really cool. Another system affected by the storm, and this is the system with loads and loads of planets, all for habitats. And there's only one planet left, and I'm about to build on it. So slowly. Oh, we've got a plant colony. Ooh. That's interesting. You fellows have this rare crystals for each pop we own of you. Not a huge fan of lithoids at the moment. I do love the idea of lithoids, but every time I apply them, I've always been not that happy with them. I think I need to do another lithoid run to try and get around that. But I would love that extra crystal stuff. There we go. And can we get transcendence? Yes, we can. The Great Awakening. Construction complete. So we're about to become ultra psychics. We should have the event soon to awaken. It'll just take a while. Or is it a tech? I can never remember. Nope, we'll have the event soon. Was I just grabbing this? There we go, the Shroud. Technology issues the secure. special project, breaching the Shroud. There we are, we are now psionic, giving us a full plus 10% to all research, and plus 5% happiness, and plus 10% to energy. I believe as well, we can now... Yep, yeah, we can now assimilate our other populations, and turn them into psychics as well. This is going to make them really unhappy, and this is going to destroy our economy for a while, but it is worth it. So, set default rights, and assimilation. Yep, yeah, there we are. Like I said, our economy is going to be just destroyed for a while. But this doesn't take too long, thankfully. Just have to grin and bear it for a year or two. Thankfully, I had loads and loads of rare resources ready to go to sell, so yeah, we can easily just manage this for a couple of years. Now, I believe one other way we could have done that is by applying a new template to one of these, applying it to only a single planet, and then converting that species, so it's then psionic, and then we could apply template like this to all the rest. But that would have taken a long, long time, even in comparison to this. And as you can see, half of these have already been converted. It does not take long at all for them to turn it into psychics. And so we reach into the Shroud. And instantly get psionic shields. Not bad at all. That is a lovely first thing to get. We don't have any of the psychic resource, though, do we? No. <laughs> um, yeah, might need to find some, because I can't buy it unless I can find some first. I can't see any. Anywhere. Hmm. That's annoying. Because I'm fairly certain the shields do take a little bit of that resource. Once we actually get the tech, that is. Interesting. Is it in society? Ah, that's why, okay. Yeah, they do. In that case, no no rush to grab them at all. The monument is complete, giving us 500 experience into the Federation, which I really am happy with. And it also gives us the Federation monument on our main planet with the following results, monthly influence, plus 0.25. Um, I mean... It's something. More declared. Yeah, but actually that's really nice. Yeah, just a passive plus 0 0.25 is a very, very nice thing indeed. I was about to say, why is that influence so bad? And it's because, of course, we're trying to be friends with these fellows. So close. And naturally we're already at war again. I, I really need to make it so only I can declare war because this is getting silly. They're so far away! Ah, uh, you can deal with them by yourself, I'm sure. What I want to do is destroy the automated dreadnought behind us. We've now unlocked the Ministry of Production, which means we also have some additional edicts we can use in the future. Industrial subsidies and forge subsidies. So these will increase our output of our metallurgists, 
or our artisans by 10%. That will also increase the upkeep by 1. Still though, 10% more alloys later on will be lovely. Our Federation is now level 4, which unlocks plus 1 influence per month for me. Our Research Agreements and Migration Pacts no longer cast influence for anyone in the Federation. And everyone gets plus 5% resources to all jobs. So we are approaching now 2300. I'm a little bit behind on tech, but in every other regard, I think we're doing pretty well. And with all these different habitats, we are going to get stronger quite quickly, honestly. Just look at all these colonies. If you think of these all as worlds... We've essentially got a large empire's worth kind of shoved into this small area. And now we can start building the science nexus, which is a lovely, lovely thing indeed. We're also now starting to build the galactic stock exchange on our worlds, which will increase our trade value drastically and give us some more unity because we still have merchant guilds. Now, the original plan was to move away from fanatic authoritarian lighter and then also move away from merchant guilds, but I'm finding them both kind of good overall. Probably not the best thing, but still. Now thankfully as well, since we've become psychic, we're also getting an extra plus 0.5 influence from our leader, our glorious leader. And in science, anyone who's psychic gives plus 10% research speed, so I do need to replace this scientist pretty quickly before they get even higher level. There we go. Actually, you should turn psychic when your species is completely... Assimilates, alright? Why did I choose you? You're a terrible leader. Oh, well, eventually you should become psychic. At least I think you should. Let's have a quick look, see. You have eight left of your species still being assimilated. Apparently, that's also you. As much as it hurts me, we need to start building habitats for a short while, just so we can save up for the science nexus. And that is this system done, I believe. I believe every world in the system which can have a habitat now has a habitat. Our trade values being increased by 10%, and I've just noticed we can once again go back into the Shroud. Okay, this might be a Covenant. Oh my god. The end of the cycle- okay, so, um, <laughs> oh boy. The end of the cycle, so this is something I have never seen before. And it is insane. Beyond insane. A level of insane which will break the game and usher in a new end crisis. So how the end cycle works, end of the cycle rather, is you get plus 100% resources, plus 100% resources from orbital stations, plus 100% navy capacity, plus 10 starbase capacity, and plus 5 monthly influence for 600 months. At the end of this, you die. Your entire empire is devoured into an entity, an entity which will start to destroy the rest of the galaxy. I believe you are thrown to a new system where you are basically starting again just with your current tech, which you've already unlocked. Oh, that would be so stupid to do. It really would. It's 50 years, it gives us 50 years, so the end game crisis will definitely not even spawn in that time. I have been looking for this in other runs. So many times. And essentially, the stronger our empire, the stronger the entity, at least I believe that's how it works. Oh, that's not fair! Not now! I can't say no. Okay, this video is going to have to be retitled because now we are playing the end of the cycle. We are bringing about the end of the galaxy. In our hubris, our greed, and our love of shiny things. The Covenant has been formed. And in some way we are breaching galactic law. How so? Well... Yeah, it is done. We have formed the Covenant with the end of the cycle. As we took its bargain, two words, and only two words were spoken. Fifty years. Then silence, as we were left to contemplate the future consequences of what we have just brought onto ourselves. May the spirits have mercy on us all. Well then, we're about to get some insane levels of resource. I assume this is also going to affect our tech. Yep, we are now at 6k. And that's going to... Oh, yep, everything just went up. That is insane. We could just 
go super heavy tech now. Super heavy tech, super heavy alloys. Our new goal then is to make the end of the cycle as powerful as we can possibly make it. But yeah, what are we in breach with? Uh, oh, because we haven't got enough ships. Well, we will soon. We will soon. What next then? Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm just... Okay. So it's all about our personal power. So... Yeah, I just need to become more powerful now. Just... Oh my god, 12 influence. We can have so many habitats. Just keep on stacking everything, I suppose. But yeah, we need to really start stacking um, alloys and research. Because now, remember, we're getting double the stuff to pay into research. And research is giving us double research. We even have more star bases. <laughs> it's like a cheat mode. You've activated cheat mode where you die at the end. <laughs> oh, this is going to be glorious. <laughs> I've always wanted to be the end of the galaxy. <laughs> okay, um... Lots of micromanaging to do now, just focusing on ourselves. I don't really care about our uh, our federation anymore. I wonder if we'll still be in it at the end. Do we just outright die? We might just outright die, but at least then we can observe the galaxy as it crushes itself. Oh, this is going to be lovely. The state has just joined the federation. As will all things in the end. <laughs> Most of the galaxy is now under our influence. You, on the other hand, are very against us. What we need to do is build a Colossus so we can start going to war just with everyone properly. Problem is, I just spent one of my um, points on something else. I'm currently building three habitats and I'm also building the Science Nexus. So, oh mighty shroud, what else? Do you have to offer me? Increased happiness, perhaps? No, less happy. Well, we are working towards the end of all things. Technology <laughs> I don't know why we're not more ecstatic. Now at 10k research, and that is increasing very, very quickly. I'm also now focusing a lot more on alloys and improving our buildings because getting rare resources is a lot easier when you get double of it from every Sweet single worker. Expand. So that is pretty lovely. Now, one thing I do want to build soon is the mega construction site. So I will be working on that as soon as we can. Okay, are there any other laws here I want to change? Uh, actually, yes, change that. Grab that. Technology. So now our fleet contribution... Sorry, yeah, yeah, the fleet contribution of the entire empire, the entire federation is increased. So we should get a larger fleet. And then let's go with free migration for everyone, saving us a bit of influence. Lovely. That's right, everyone. Send me your ships. Let them serve a greater purpose. Colonization in progress. Well, there we go. I can now start building the Colossus. I've chosen Neutron Sweep, which means we can destroy all life on a planet, leaving the planet ready for habitation. Oh, mighty shroud. What else do we get? Thank you. Precognition interface. I believe that is... If I go to a ship, I can actually use it. Oh, I thought it was one of these. Oh, do I not actually have it yet? That could be the case. There it is. Okay, let's get that first. The second that we run out of space for habitats is the second we'll start declaring war on absolutely everyone nearby, even if they were Federation members. I say were, because we will leave the Federation to do this. Saying so now I'm about to get the Colossus. It's currently... Oh, yep, the yards have just been finished. So what we need to do is save it for the Colossus. So am I building any other ships right now? Nope, I'll just wait. Honestly, not that long. We can start constructing the Colossus. Once the Colossus is ours, we can go to war with this empire here and take over the entire confederacy. We have the fleet power, and we'll have the war doctrine to do so. Just grabbing pretty much everything right now. We're now at 13k research, which is just insane, considering where it was a second ago. <laughs> oh, sanity truly is for the weak. Something I didn't even notice before. Shroud marked. This world is marked by the shroud. Something very bad is going to happen here. 
So I'm not 100% sure what exactly increases the power of the end of the cycle. Is it how many populations we have? Is it how many cycles we have? Is it our overall victory score? I don't really know. At the moment we are close to being first, only with one of the Fallen Empires being better than us. And we are increasing pretty much everything, so we're getting more fleet power, we're getting more habitats, more population, more, more economy, more research. Yeah, just absolutely everything is being increased. So regardless what it is, we'll get it. In fact, you know what? More tech, please. Hello there once again, Shroud. Let's see what you have for us. Uh, not really anything I could care about too much. Avatar, please? Excellent, we got, oh, the ground force version. Well, that could have been better. Finally attacking the automated dreadnought. Colonization there we go, and of course, we will be repairing it. You return home. You get in there and research. About to make a new tech ship. There we go. And you can survey the system so we can get that world. I kind of forgot there's a world over here, and I've allowed one of my allies to end up capturing it. Doesn't really matter too much, just something that happened. Now, one thing to know, to that current fleet power, and with our current join or die way of warfare, we could probably take over the galaxy and get the win condition. There's only three empires? Yeah, I believe there's only three empires which currently aren't under our control, if you include the Fallen Empire. Oh, so in that case, probably two. So there's probably four empires. We could take over pretty much everything, most likely, in the time allotted. We're only still at the start of our 50 years until the end of days, and we're already becoming just insanely powerful. But I don't really care about the wind condition. I'm just saying it's possible, we're just not going for it at all. The Dreadnought has been restored. How strong is the Dreadnought again? Oh, only 6.9k. Uh, it's an interesting number, I'll say that much, but not exactly all that powerful. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I have you. Kind of. So many habitats being completed. Too many asteroids here, not enough places to put down actual habitats. And so we Sir, move out. Influence expanded. Huh. The ancient tomb has been completely excavated, which means now we have this. We can summon in a small fleet of Empire ships if we want. Though I probably will never do that. On the upside, though, it gave us loads and loads of minor artifacts. Habitats are being built very quickly and finally beating our influence gain, which is really weird to see. And our science nexus is now going up to level 2, which is, again, rushing along since we have the ascension perk, giving us plus 50%. We have, if we find it, the edict, the living metal edict, giving us plus 50%, and even the ambition, giving us an additional 50%. Mega structures are very easy for us to build. Ooh, and our empire sprawl is now a problem Star again. System charted. We are building so, so much that it's just rocketing ahead, and if you don't pay attention, it quickly gets out of hand. Yeah, leaving these on auto is a terrible idea. Factory station, no buildings being affected by it. Research station, plus 10% research output. Much better. The Colossus is now ready, so with that, we're moving our fleets out to start taking out empire after empire until everyone is destroyed who isn't already with us. We could, of course, just make them with us, but you know, it's more fun with a little bit more destruction. Where is the Colossus? There you are. Why aren't you moving? Colossus, go over here. Thank you. That looks so much more terrifying with a black hole in the background. Angry plant. One of our fleets is already close enough, so total war is active. We have declared war to safeguard our interests. Let's get to work. Our Federation fleet is here, so they should very easily just carve through everything. And then trailing behind, we have the Colossus, who will simply arrive and eradicate every last colony. Well, eradicate all life on the colony. I mean, we're not brutal. We won't destroy the buildings and stuff. That would be weird. 
in every new world we get, our power increases, and with our power, everything is a little bit better. And I'm going to put down a starport somewhere here once we grab a system. And that'll be to create all of the um, new colony ships. That will be used to create all the new colony ships. I can't talk again. As our habitats continue to be added. Now, I really should save up so that I can make the mega shipyard, but I keep on forgetting. Plus, it is fun to have this many habitats. Oh, I can't help it. More habitats. More habitats everywhere. We'll just build some more shipyards elsewhere. It'll be fine. And bombardment is about to begin on the very first planet. There we go. You have been cleansed so that you may benefit the end. Now, of course, I could just invade the world, but that would take a little bit longer. Oh, you know it would be a lot better just to invade these worlds, wouldn't it? Just send in some ground forces, then we also get their populations instantly. We don't have much time. Oh, but I like doing it. Okay, we're going to do this to at least a few sim uh, symptoms, systems. So the Colossus will essentially allow us to grab systems a bit faster, but if we send in the ground forces, yeah, we could just crush them. And we do have the psionic armies, so it's not like we have particularly weak ground forces either. Start mass producing them. Fine. But essentially, we needed the Colossus in the first place. Just so we can have this war type. Otherwise, we couldn't go to total war. So it's not like I've wasted time making the Colossus. The Colossus has to exist for this war type to exist. Purified. Our first successful invasion. So there we are. We now have one of their worlds already. Welcome to the Raxar State. You will be assimilated. And you will become psychic. I mean, that's pretty cool, right? Hmm, can't make psychers yet. In that case, um, let's go with clones. The rest of our ground force is already on the way. It's going to take a while to get here, that's all. Construction. What is this? There's a ring world with a primitive civilization. Excuse me? It's a sanctuary. I... I don't understand. I am so confused. What is this? Game? The whole system's just called sanctuary. Um... Well, this is definitely new. It's basically the same system as... Okay, looking at it, it's basically the same system as the Ringworld origin, except for it hasn't been quite as destroyed. And they haven't yet reached the Space Age. Is that what's going on here? Is this the Ringworld origin before the civilization once again becomes spacefaring? I mean, it would make sense, right? But, yeah, there's some damage here next to their system. As you can see, it's all broken up, but not quite as devastating as usual. I mean, in, in the Ringworld origin, it's a whole section is just obliterated. This starts all four systems, oh, sorry, all four um, sections still functional. I am just confused. Hopefully, I'll find out soon enough with my uh, scientist. I might send a ground force there, a ground force, a construction vessel there, just because I do want that. Saying that, though, it's going to be insanely expensive, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Very. Oh. Primitive civilizations. Yep, each one has its own civilization. And they're all different. The real question is, why has no one claimed this? Technology secured. There must be something going on here. A fallen empire has awoken. It's 
too late for you. Our ally has had a machine uprising. Well, that's very annoying. Okay, send in one of our fleets, please. And as you can see, our fleets have become very powerful recently. And this is because, of course, our tech is just going insane. Lots and lots of repeatables, and we have enough alloys to make whatever we want. Also seems like our allies have some claims over here, so I'm going to kind of rush through all this. Okay, probably about to do something quite stupid, but I'm claiming Sanctuary. I mean, that name alone indicates something pretty scary if we claim it, so... Will we anger one of the Fallen Empires? There is the Machine Empire over here. There are the broken ones. And for some reason, neither of these have claimed it, so I'm assuming if they do grab it, something bad happens. But I need to find out what. Yeah, it seems like this is all going to be given to our allies. Still pretty good. We can just eradicate one of the other empires, which is pretty nice. suppose we should send in our ground forces to help out, and we should deal with the enemy fleets over there. If I deal with their fleets, they, our allies can actually do a lot of the work themselves. Then we can move on to something else. There's very little which isn't under our control right now. Splitting our Federation fleet. Even just half of our fleet is more than strong enough to deal with the enemy there. So I'm just going to jump there, deal with these two, which is their main fleet sections. The other half will continue to do what it was already doing, which is destroying their systems. Okay, so it isn't just claims, although that's what happened over here. It is also just because we're so close, only one jump away, and that's how Total War works when it comes to um, splitting up systems when one enemy is destroyed. Okay, you can deal with that. At the very least, we can still destroy the Empire. Our ground forces have just reached the Sanctuary, so naturally, it's time to take over everything. That makes two. Planetary invasion there we go. Now for the third. Oh, we are actually out of energy. Okay, then. Thankfully, we've got an insane amount of rare resources which we can sell. This one's home world. <laughs> this one's home world is called Bruv. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bruv. Uh, we're inviting you now, bruv. <laughs> um, yep, we're inviting bruv. Bruv. I love that. Oh, you are not very kind to those around you, bruvans. <laughs> Planetary invasion commenced. Ground invasion force has seized a planet. Oh, sadly, that won't be under our control, but still it amuses me nonetheless. This uprising is being very annoying. So it turns out they're actually way stronger than I thought they were, and I ended up losing my first fleet. Just completely lost them. Because I had in excess of 200,000 fleet power, I said about 110,000. Obviously the numbers don't really add up in my favour. Now I've sent a few other fleets and we're dealing with it. It's just constant stragglers and they've grabbed so many worlds already. You're just kind of sitting there. I'm tempted to go after the machine fallen empire. We definitely have enough fleet power. Even just the Federation ships will probably be able to defeat it. Planetary invasion commenced. Would be a good next target. And over here we're just dealing with all of the additional worlds. Soon enough. Wow, the conglomerate's got a lot more power out of this. Well done you. I wonder what happens when the end of the cycle triggers. Will I still stay in the Federation? I think I will. I'll just be so weak that someone else will take control. The Confederacy has fallen, and its power has been distributed between the state, the conglomerate, and the Raxar state. Which is kind of glorious. Here's the thing, when I lose to the endgame crisis, to the uh, end of the cycle, I do want these fellows to be as strong as possible, so I'm actually kind of happy they got all this territory. I think I'll stay in their federation, so yeah, the more power they have, the better. So next, we're going to be attacking these fellows. The problem is, it is all attached to the state. Not us, the other state. So I don't know what to do there. If I just attack it like normal using Total War, I think I'll end up giving it all to these. Unless I jump perhaps and just go straight into Alpha Refuge, the problem is I won't be strong enough after I jump. Oh well, once again, it doesn't matter if we make 
the state stronger. It's just important that everything is on the Federation side, or at least as much as possible is on the Federation side before the cycle is ended. We have declared war to safeguard our interests. We have declared war to safeguard our interests. Now that's a proper Federation fleet. Technology yeah, it went straight to my ally's side. Oh well, that is actually the best outcome. I don't really have time anymore to fully upgrade these, so it is actually better. There are ways around that, but and I think I know all of them, but either way... It is better that it goes to my ally than myself, as much as it hurts to allow that to happen. And it really, really does. Why did they just dodge me? That was their one chance to have a good fight. So they just ended up dodging my fleet, which is now 420. <laughs> so we can take out their citadel, only losing a couple of ships. Oh, I thought we lost something. There's their fleets. They've combined into one fleet, but yeah, that's not going to be near enough. Okay, you two combine. You split. Dink. You attack production unit. You go after processing. You invade alpha. Construction. All will fall to the state, and then all will fall to the warp. And it is done! We have completely taken over this area. So that is the Alpha Refuge dealt with, the Fallen Empire has fallen again, and that fleet is ready to go. So what's stopping us from finishing off this? You seem to have pretty much every single system just completely controlled here. What are you missing? Yeah, I don't see what you could possibly be missing. Seems like you've invaded every single planet. Um, no idea how I could help you out, since I don't know what systems we're after right now. And planets. So if it has these little spikes around it, it means it's already been, it's already been completely controlled. Aha! Nope. Well, I'll have a closer look in a second, and I'll send in some of my ground forces. The only claims I can see are the ones over here, and it's already fully claimed. Is it just because they control these two stations? Is that what's going on here? Again, I'll take another proper look in a second, and we'll figure it all out. Construction. There's something I've only just started to consider. When we try and beat the end of the cycle boss we spawn, I have no idea what that boss is like. What's its strengths, what's its weaknesses? All I can really imagine, without looking up spoilers, is that it's going to be like the psionic entities, the avatars you can spawn from the warp, which is loads of shield, a moderate to low amount of hull, no armor. So, yeah. But also, what type of weapons? I mean, again, if it's like that, it's going to ignore shields and armor, so we should just go with... Well, neither. Perhaps I should start stacking up, oh, energy weapons, that way we can use the arc emitters and cloud lightning, perhaps. Technology or missiles. Missiles can go straight through shields and then hit the hull with bonus damage. Yeah, shields, sorry, missiles would be the best. So I should stop grabbing that and I should start grabbing missile damage. Oh, we are really late with that. How long do you have left? Probably not long. Oh, not long at all. Almost 2,000, just over 2,000 days and we are done. Oh, that's, uh, that's gonna be a thing. Technology secured. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, so it was just these two. It was just the, um, stations. Of course it was the stations. For some reason, because they had the worlds, for some reason I imagined it otherwise. There we go. The warrior clans have been defeated, which means now the only non-special empire, aka Awakened Empire, is these fellows, the Alliance. They're the only ones who are not currently with us. Of course, they'll never join us because they hate everyone. 
When can I declare war on you next? Oh dear. <laughs> oh, there's a problem. Actually, no, no, I should be able to, right? Wait, how many days did I have left? I've just completely forgotten how many days I've I'm very tired. Oh no, never mind. Technology Before the end of the cycle happens, I've just put it onto Union mode, which means all the colours are now being shown by what union you have. So here's our federation. It controls, like, uh, almost 90% of the galaxy, perhaps. Peace was almost an option. I mean, we could get the win condition. Well, we could have got the win condition if my allies didn't go to war over here. What I should have done is change the war. Uh, change the war? Change the law. So, war declaration, president decides. That would have stopped them going to war, but I didn't think about it, and they managed to, to overrule me because they all wanted to go to war except for me, and I wasn't quite powerful enough at the time to say no. So now I am prioritizing any research which will help us out immediately once we get started with one single new world. So extra energy, extra minerals, and extra food, basically. All the basic necessities, we are going to try and improve as much as possible. That way we can start expanding and start doing whatever we need to do as fast as we can. The main issue is just, well, the Federation controls everything, so we might not be able to even wage war to get more space. That could be a potential problem here. We might end up doing the One World Challenge by accident, but we could perhaps try and reclaim areas the end of the cycle, destroy it again. I don't know what happens. Do they leave stations behind defending it? I really don't know. Just anything I think of anyway to improve ourselves here. Something I wish I recognised way earlier is you no longer need to destroy the station on, let's say, this star before building the megastructure. You can just go ahead and start building the megastructure, and I believe it's automatically removed. Since it starts, or perhaps it's removed once the megastructure is finished. That must have been in the recent change. I did not realise that until just now, and look at how many habitats I have. I have 82 just in the first sector. Well, I have 82 colonies, many of which are habitats. The end of the cycle is about to finish in less than 10 days, just looking upon our galaxy in a state of mostly peace right now, thanks to us. They could have been way more aggressive, I think, though our allies going to war with the Alliance over here really did slow us down. I didn't really want to go to war with the Zealots. I think we've done quite a lot. We could have done a bit more, but I think I have focused quite a lot on making the Shroud, making the end of the cycle as powerful as possible with my limited knowledge of how that works. I've tried to increase our population in case that is what makes them stronger, which I think it might be. I've increased our fleet in case it's that. I've increased our tech. I've increased everything which would count as power for our empire. How long do we have? Oh, three days! Wow, I paused that just in time. Okay, I thought we had like at least ten. Um, three, two, one. Immense amount of lag. And... Well, there we go. So, uh, okay, we have Exile, and we have a world currently being... Okay, so we have Exile over here. And we have the Tomb World over there. Now, I will be honest, I did look up a little bit how this works. And what I found out was that a lot of people were getting problems with their empire starting... Well, their exile starting in other empires' systems if there aren't any worlds available. So I got nervous about that. So what I had done over here, in a last-ditch effort just in case, which apparently was correct, is I'd set up a habitat not colonized it so it doesn't count as being shrouded and then I destroyed our starbase therefore there was a starbase waiting for us because we have the starbase preference the starbase the habitat preference which means it was likely to throw us into a habitat this on the other hand I'm not 100% sure about apparently you get to keep world you're still colonizing that I didn't know I wish I did know that, because if I did, I could have started colonising this world over here, I could have set up loads of habitats and started to colonise those, and simply gave ourselves a bonus. But at least we do have a secondary world. The problem is, of course, with this, is it's right next to... Oh, look at how many things there are! Oh, is it every single habitat we had? Oh, we had lots of habitats. Oh, we had lots of habitats! Hello there! Oh, I'm guessing you're the big bad. Okay, let's actually read this, shall we? The end of the cycle. Reckoning. 
Our time is up. For 50 years, we have benefited from the immense power given to us by the end of the cycle. We knew there would be a price to pay, but we thought it might be one that we could bear, or that we could find some way to avoid paying. It was not, and we could not. The price we have paid is everything in an instant. So fast there is no time to react, let alone respond. The Raxar state is gone. Where once there was thriving colonies, there is now only a death. Where once mighty fleets crossed the void, there is only ghosts and debris, all devoured by the end, all taken by the Shroud. All that remains of our empire is a group of exiles led by Petals of Brown, a powerful psionic who saw the end coming and led a small part of our population into hiding on a world not marked by the end. AKA Exile. How many do we have? Okay, so we got given an alloy foundry, civilian industries, and hydroponics farms, so all the basic stuff to keep our empire functioning. Whoa, we only got given five people. Oh, no, we didn't. <laughs> Hello, you three down there. Didn't notice you there. Okay, good. So we have eight people. That makes a huge difference. <laughs> Could have just read it there as well. Yeah. As if having our empire destroyed overnight wasn't bad enough, a massive shroud entity has manifested itself in space above Alpha Hub, made immensely powerful by the devoured consciousnesses of our psionics. It now roams the galaxy, the galaxy, seeking further prey. That's you there, isn't it, lad? No, you're doing all that much roaming, but I guess that might start at the end of the month when things update. In fact, I'm keen to see what resources we have left. It's kind of removed some, but left minerals. I'm guessing that needs to update. Oh, good. We just finished a tech. Yeah, five months remaining. Research at 45k. That ain't true, is it, lads, though? That ain't true. Let's uh, see what happens. Oh, it's okay. Just 10,000 months for our next tech. Okay, so we have our uh, now updated stats. Are you ever going to move? I'm assuming you'll move eventually. I mean, either way, it's done the job. It's eradicated our empire from existence. So, in just over six years, the endgame crisis can spawn in. And we don't have an empire. Well, we have a very small empire. Now, it's good to see that we are still part of the Federation. We are no longer the dominant force, obviously, but we are still part of the Federation. Oh, that's why I'm getting energy. I was really, really weirded out by that. Okay, so that is because of all the trades we have. And apparently they are leaving the trades open. They're not our research agreements. Why not our research agreements? I still have loads of tech researched. Ooh. Brought on the end! <laughs> oh no, I didn't even think about that! The other empires hate me now! They're still protective though! Plus five yearly, okay. <laughs> oh no! Thankfully, we're still on neutral relations. Yeah, they're all protective over me, that's good. Uh, so they're unlikely to kick me from the Federation. They might do, though. They very well might just kick me from the Federation. Yeah, we currently have neutral... F oh, man. So glad we have so many other positives just about keeping us in neutral. <laughs> wow. I mean, that's not neutral. That's... We currently have tense relations. Okay, yeah, tense with you, but a lot of the members... Who's the current dominant member? That would be... Da, 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 da. You. How about you? You're neutral? Okay, good. As long as, lo as long as you're neutral, you won't kick me. Yeah, opinion is affecting research agreements. I'm surprised it's neutral for so many negatives, though. That might change. Uh, there's a good chance we're going to be kicked from the Federation. I think this is going to just be the end of the run. <laughs> oh, end of the cycle. You magnificent beast. Um... Yeah, we can't even check out how strong this thing is. It's just the warped consciousness. I wonder if it'll ever move. It's meant to move. Maybe it has a delay. Oh, no, all those things happening. At least they're keeping the trade agreement. So we have a world over here, which, by the way, of course, isn't our original species. Then we have a very small world over here, a single habitat. Uh, let's give it a governor. Why not? Um, <laughs> what do I do now? <laughs> Well, I think first things first, we need to build star bases. We need more than one star base because there's a chance. Oh, we don't actually have a star base here. Why not? Hello? Shouldn't I have a star base? Okay. Do I have a star base over here? Yes. Okay, well, we'll build a star port there then. Hopefully, eventually, we can build one there. 
Oh, it's moving. It's moving. Where's it gonna go? Oh, please don't go directly towards us. I don't- I don't know the mechanics. Maybe it is directly towards us. Maybe it's just towards the closest empire, which might be us still. Yeah, it might be us. One, two, three, four, five for my habitat there. One, two, three, four, four. Oh no, it is equal to over there. But it isn't going that way, is it? No, it's going this way. No, it's going to the center of the galaxy first. Nope, it is definitely going this way. One, two, three, four. Oh no, we are doomed. Um, We can grab this world as well. We do still have jump drives. And we can buy a lot of alloys, so we have the potential of jumping over here and trying to make some habitats. Nope, because my influence has gone away. Yeah. You know, if I knew I was going to have the end of the cycle at the start of the playthrough, I would have done things very differently. Oh good, we can talk to the Shroud. Can we get another another Covenant now, maybe? Increased happiness. Yes, we get increased happiness. Good. We're so glad about what's happened. It's a very slow-moving thing, at least. I wonder if it just destroys worlds. I mean, I assume it'll have to, otherwise it won't be able to win. Yeah, look, every single habitat has become one of these. Like, the smaller version. I wonder how strong they are. Don't go up, don't go up, don't... Yes, yes... Yes, it's not going towards us! We have a chance then. We have a very minuscule chance. Where are you going? Uh, yeah, I guess it's going down here. I wonder if it's going to destroy this world. There's a habitat over here as well, which was left. Um, I wasn't yet colonizing it. I had the system, but I hadn't yet colonized it. Is there any point of having scientists right now? No. When we have ten research into everything, it's not really worth it when we need a <laughs> when we need that much. Oh, oh no! <laughs> this is so weird starting like this. If we're lucky, the end game crisis might be late. I have been told the end game crisis will still occur. So it's still here. Yeah, it is really slow at least. You brought about the end. Well done. So this is our new leader then, the one which, uh... Actually, no, this is the one who saved everyone. It's the old leader who doomed everyone. This is the current generation. That was the old generation of evil. Wait, I'm not even getting trade value. Where is my home system? Okay, we need to make this planet over here our capital then, because for some reason I'm not getting the station back over here. Is it because of you guys? Surely it can't be. Aww. Oh good, we've got our outpost back. So, the one good thing is, of course, we are still... A void-born empire, which means we don't need that much space. Uh, for instance, even here we can have one, two, three, four habitats, and I believe I can still build here, so perhaps five habitats here. So think of that as five worlds. We can have one, two, three, four here. Again, I think you can put them on a planet even if it's a moon, as in um, a habitable planet even if it's a moon. Two there. Quite a few here, and last one. Only two here, but still. That's a lot of habitats. And, remember, we have all this area over here. Not every single one of our systems had a habitat. And we do have jump drives, which means we can jump to other systems. And start colonizing over here. This could be our new space. Am I saying I've got a chance versus the endgame crisis? Not really. I, I think I need to focus purely on alloys. Um, tech is just... So far in the future right now, it's not even something to consider. How well did we do with tech? Let's have a look, see, uh... Stuff we've already got. Didn't really get all that five missiles, did we? No, we didn't. Okay, with kinetic, we actually got decently far. Not stupidly far, but we got quite a bit. With missiles, we got a little bit, but that's about it. And a tiny bit in armor. And with physics, we got quite a few shield upgrades for a call, and a fair bit of the basic 
economy stuff. So shields and kinetic were actually not that far behind in for this late in the game. So if we become an alloy churning empire now, just completely focused on alloys, we're still probably doomed. Oh my god, 12,000 months. <laughs> But we could potentially get a force together which is strong enough to deal with the very, very minimum of the enemy. Depending on the crisis. I'm really hoping for the Scourge, even though that's quite bad for us to use Kinetic on, or the Unbidden. Essentially just not the Contingency, because the Contingency will get everywhere. The Unbidden and the Scourge, we also have a chance of it spawning, let's say, somewhere over here. Then we have tens of years to recover. Which still might n not be enough, but with all these trade agreements producing the extra resources, we're not that starved. No, I don't care about that anymore. I'm just trying to make it sound better than it is, but I'm going to struggle. We're, we're probably going to lose, got to be honest. It's probably going to be a losing run, but still. Slow death. Okay, so because this is such a weird point in the game, I'm actually going to be calling the video here, which is surprising, and I'll probably explain this now at the start of the video, because this is going to take a very long time, and still might end up in a complete and utter failure, but I feel like I want to focus a lot on what I'm going to do now, and the choices I'm going to make, and if I rush that in a full playthrough style, a lot of it's going to be missed. So, very weird, it's going to be a full playthrough split over two videos, rather than just one, but I think this is just so unique and so interesting, I've never had the end... Oh, did you just... No, for a second, I thought you devoured the habitats. Well, I've never had the end of the cycle, and it's on times 25 crisis difficulty. So hopefully this will be entertaining, will be interesting, and I've had a lot of fun. Could have done better to make the end of the cycle more powerful, but I think it's more than strong enough. And honestly, the real problem now is just setting us so far back before the endgame crisis. So if you've enjoyed today's video and want to see the next part, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Stellaris is a series you wish to see continued in the future. What a weird run. Isn't it fantastic? Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.